hello everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel today i am making this detachable peplum kind of like a belt and i like it very much i feel like it just adds something extra to my um, clothing so let's uh, get, go ahead and do that together so for the thread i'm using this particular one this color i don't even know it's closer to teal probably it feels like a mixture of blue green with a bit of gray inside okay so first as usual i start by making a slip knot and then i am going to be chaining 146 um, which should be equivalent to 42 inches so you just chain and uh, until you actually have uh, 42 inches in total for this particular thread that i'm using to achieve 42 inches i did uh, a chain of 146 So I'm done with my 146 so I'm going to do the 147th chain that is going to be my turning chain so I'm not going to work into that chain I'm just going to work into the 146th chain and I'm going to put a single crochet inside that 146th chain and that's what I'm going to do for this entire row just put single crochets in each chain um, using a six millimeter crochet hook I don't know if I had mentioned that but that is the size of the crochet hook that I'm using So I'm done with my row of single crochets and that is what I have so now I'm going to start with row one the single crochet plus the foundation chain is just both of them form the foundation chain so for row one I am beginning by chaining three like that then once I chain three I'm going to be counting um, three stitches one two and three then in that fourth stitch I'm going to be placing a fan and my fan is going to consist of two double crochets so that is my first double crochet and then now I'm doing my second double crochet then I'm going to chain one and do two other double crochets so that is my third double crochet and finally my fourth double crochet to complete a fan so in uh, in this tutorial when i talk about a fan that's what i i mean right there two double crochet one chain and then two double crochet just like that then now i'm going to count again three stitches one two three in the fourth stitch right there i'm going to place another fan that is two double crochets so that is one and then two double crochet and then i will chain one and i'll put two more double crochet that is three and four and that's my fan and that's what i'm going to be doing for this row so i i i, I put a fan in every fourth stitch and then we'll meet at the end of this row you should be remaining with two stitches by the end of this row then uh, we'll come back and see what next
so now I'm at the end of um, this row. I just have one more fan to do. So we're going to do that last fan as usual by two double crochets and then chain one and then two other double crochets. Now I am left with two stitches and I'm just going to put a double crochet right there in that last stitch to complete the row. So I want to make sure that I am getting my hook through two um, threads and not one. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. So to begin row 2, I'm going to be chaining 3 and then I will turn my work. So now for row 2, it's pretty simple. You just put a fan in each of the chain 1 spaces of the previous fans. So like here, we have that chain 1 space in the middle of the 4 double crochets. I'm just going to put a fan right there. The fan is just still the same, 2 double crochets and then chain 1. And then two double crochets so in each chain one space of the of um, the fans in the previous row I'm going to be placing a fan and I'll continue that way until I reach the end of this row then we'll see what to do next I'm almost done with row two I only have one fan left so in that chain one space of that fan I'm going to place my last fan uh, two double crochets and then chain one and then two double crochets then now in that chain three of the previous row in that third chain up there, I am going to place a double crochet to complete row 2 and that brings me to the end of the first part of this project. So if you want your belt to be wider, the band of your belt to be wider, then you can continue with row 3, even row 4, just depending on how wide you want your band to be for, for today uh, for me I feel like this length is enough actually if you don't even um, want to do the peplum and all you could just also use this as a belt you just um, pass it through the the, the the hoops for the belt and then you just tie it and you have a belt but if you want the peplum then let's go on So now I am just um, 
trying to measure this belt on my waist so that I can see at what point I'm actually going to be putting my peplum so I've just um, tied it and I want to put my stitch markers at the point where the tie is starting just to estimate and see how many inches do I need to put my peplum and how many inches of this belt is going to be taken up by for or rather for the time yeah so that's just what I'm doing right now. So now from one of those points where I had my stitch markers, um, I'm going to begin with the peplum part. So I've just attached my thread right there like that. And then once my thread is attached, I am going to be chaining 26 to begin my peplum. So if you want your peplum longer than what mine was, uh, then uh, obviously you have to chain more. But um, for me, the 26 is going to be enough for what I envision for now. So now I'm going to skip my uh, the first chain and in the second chain I'm going to place one single crochet like that and one double crochet still in that same chain and this combination of a single crochet and a double crochet in one chain is called a Suzette stitch so that is my first Suzette stitch so I'm going to skip the next chain and then in the chain that follows, I do another Suzette stitch. That is one single crochet and one double crochet. So that is my second Suzette stitch. So that is just what I'm going to be doing for this row, yeah? I skip one chain and in the next chain, I do a Suzette stitch. So let's do this to the end of this row until we have two chains left yes then we'll come back and see what to do next so now i am at the end i'm left with two stitches so i'm skipping one stitch and in that last stitch i'm going to place a half double crochet to complete this row and this is going to form my row one so now to complete that i am going to do a slip stitch in the next two um stitches along that base yes along that base that i had initially meant yes I'm just going to do two slip stitches in the next two stitches and then I turn my work to begin row two. Something else I have to say is that be consistent with the hook that you're using. So if it's six, use six millimeter crochet hook all through. So now I'm going to skip those first two stitches because they are those slip stitches that I have made. And in the third stitch, I am going to place a Suzette stitch. That is one single crochet and one double crochet, okay? So we, we are using six millimeter crochet hook for the entire project, okay? So I continued that way for this row like I did for the previous row. Skip one stitch, place a Suzette stitch in the next. Skip one stitch, place a Suzette stitch in the next. So we are going to continue this way for row two. And then we shall meet at the end of this row once you have two stitches left.
now I'm at the end of row two. I am left with two stitches as you can see. I'm going to skip one stitch and then I'm going to place a half double crochet in the last stitch to complete row two. This is just basically what we're going to be doing. So to begin the next row, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn my work to begin row three. So for row three, I am going to start with a Suzette stitch right at the top of that half double crochet. So I'm not placing the Suzette stitch in the chain one. I'm placing the Suzette stitch in the half double crochet stitch of the previous row. If you find it hard to identify that once you do the half double crochet in the previous row, place a stitch marker before you chain one. So that once you turn your work, you are a hundred percent sure of where you're supposed to start placing your suzette stitch. So again, this row is just going to be like row one and row two. Skip one stitch, place a suzette stitch in the next. Skip one stitch, place a suzette stitch in the next until we reach the end of this row. And this is what we're just going to be doing. It's basically a repeat of row two and row three so once i'm done with this um i'm going to repeat row two repeat row three all the way until i reach to that point where i had placed my second stitch marker along the base but now there is something that um, we're going to be talking about at the end of this row that i'm going to show you just something small that is going to change um we're going to see that at the end of this row so here we are at the end of the row. I am left with two stitches as usual. I skip one in the last stitch. I place a half double crochet. Now this is what is going to be changing from now on to the rest of the rows. Right there at the base of my belt, I'm going to place a slip stitch in that row that I have been working in. So I'm not going to place a slip stitch in the next row, but in that row that I have been working in. That is where I'm going to place my first slip stitch and then my second slip stitch is now going to be in the next available stitch along the base. And like what I did previously where I put my slip stitches in the next two stitches. Here I'm putting one stitch in the row that I'm working in and the next stitch now in the next available row. So that is how you're able to get the peplum effect kind of like the gathered effect okay so from from this row onwards as you repeat row two and row three just remember right there at the base you slip stitch in that row and in the next available stitch and not in the next two available stitches okay so that's just how we make this peplum i hope that you will get to make yours if you do then don't forget to send me the pictures i'll leave the instagram link um in the description box you can send me the pictures and tell me that you actually tried to make your own and tell me if you love it if you like this tutorial don't forget to give it a thumbs up if there is anything you didn't like then you can tell me in the comment section that i can improve on the next time i am making a tutorial thank you for watching up to this point and i will see you next time so um nothing much is left i'm just going maybe to do a few more stitches here and there and then um we'll get to see just more videos of how it looks on me and how i have paired it with other uh, clothes of mine so thanks for watching